Hello everyone and welcome to Wired for Music season two webinar. Today we are talking about gaining attention in the music industry, all about digital growth. Hello, my name is Anna Marie. I am your host for today's webinar. I'm very much looking forward to chatting with all of you, chatting with our special guests as well. It is going to be a jam-packed show. I, I feel like I say that all the time, but yeah, it is. An all-woman lineup. Hello, we're making history and I see all your comments flooding in. Make sure that you're connecting with us. You can also tweet us at Wired for Music. Let us know how you're enjoying it. Let me just shout out a few people while I'm here. Patrick, hello. Hi, Patrick. He's ready for this. I'm ready for this too. Ramel, hello. Akria, hey Akria, how you doing? Iris is in the building, Clara's in the building, Chica, Ivy, hello, hello, hello. I see all your comments. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So if you're unfamiliar with Wired for Music, well, I'm sure you are, because that's why you're here, um, but we help young people access opportunities um, in music, in the music industry. So whether you're a producer, you're an artist, you're a creative, um, then Wired for Music is definitely the place to be. And in today's conversation, I am going to be talking to three amazing ladies about what they do in the music industry and how they're able to navigate the digital space. So, hey, this is me, Anna Marie. Follow me. <laughs> and um, I shall bring the ladies to the stage if they are ready. Yes. Hi. Hello, 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 hello. How's everyone feeling? Good? Good, yeah. Good, good, good. So I'm going to go from my right to or how it's on the screen. So we've got uh, Jessica Sophia Bruno, who's a social media marketer. I'll give her, uh, I'll give everyone opp opportunity to introduce themselves afterwards. Uh, Kirsten Perkins, who does many things. <laughs> She's a campaigns assistant at Universal, artist relations at R and Brit, also a content. Yeah. Uh, strategist. Shay D is here as well. She's a rap artist. Also got a bi-weekly show on Represent Radio and she is a youth mentor and I'm very, very excited to be chatting with you, Lat. I hope we're good. Good? I don't know if you're on mute. Okay, you can say, you can yeah. speak. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Um, just a couple of house rules for people watching on YouTube. Please refrain, refrain from using any profanities or any kind of um, uh, insulting language in the comments. It's all about positivity. We're all here to learn. I, I heard that we sold over 80 tickets, so which is a massive, massive achievement. So big up if you're here and I hope you enjoy this talk. Get a notepad. I've got my notepad right here and a pen. So get yours because these ladies are full of wisdom, full of experience and I'm sure we can all learn something from them today. Um, quick shout out to Evie. Hello, Evie, Sabrina, Perry, Demira, Wired HQ as well says hello. Yay. So I'll start with you, uh, Jessica. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. Hi, guys. I'm Jessica. So I title myself as a creator. I'm a freelance social media manager and I specialize in events, branding and marketing. So I teach creatives how to master socials with a clear marketing strategy. And together we create engaging content while staying true to their virtual voice. A little bit about me is I've been doing this for 10 years. I look young, but I am 28. Um, I started this business, though, this freelance business in March in 2020 during the beginning of lockdown. So before that, I spent 10 years in the industry. In industry, I ran the UK's biggest brunch party events, helped me learn so much about marketing. Um, and I'm obsessed with reality TV. So that's a little bit about me. Hi. <laughs> What's your favourite um, show? Reality show. Okay, I'm obsessed with Below Deck at the moment and Below Deck Mediterranean. <laughs> okay, I've not seen that. Currently, oh, I'm watching Bling Empire. If anyone's watched that <laughs> on Netflix, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just getting into it. Yeah, it's good. It is good. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kirsten, you're up next. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Kirsten Perkins. Um, I work at Universal Music as a campaign assistant in their commercial affairs, international commercial affairs department, which is like really wordy, but essentially we work with like streaming services. We do everything that drives money. Um, work, I work on so many things in that department, influencer campaigns, playlisting, those different things for um, acts that are international. Um, and I also do um, arts relations at Arm Brit, um, which is where I know Anna. Um, hello. <laughs> and um, yeah, so Arm Brit is an online platform that um, supports UK R&B music. Um, we have an Instagram, we have a Twitter, we have um, a website where we post articles, we put on music videos. We had a wonderful show, but because of quarantine, we can no longer film, which Anna was uh, our wonderful host for. And I, yeah, so I do ask the labor relations for them and I work with the artists um, and just sort of help on content strategy. And then I do things here and there on management teams for some of my artist friends. Um, so yeah, that's about me. And I've been working in the industry for nearly, yeah, 18 months now. So not super, super long, but, um, been getting my hands in as many pies as possible and just like super passionate about music. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> nice. And Shay D, tell us about yourself. Hi everyone. So I am a rapper. Um, I also do some spoken word. Um, and I used to run an event pre-COVID every month in Old Street. I had a hip hop and um, hip hop and spoken word night, which also had an open mic and a rap cypher. So we used to put on like emerging artists and then headliners. Um, as a rapper, I record, I tour, I put on um, the first all female hip hop tour in the UK last year and the year before. And um, as a radio presenter, I DJ and present a show on Represent. I used to do Itch FM, took a break and then missed it a little bit. So I went back to doing that. And um, my role, kind of day in day out um, on the side is um, I'm a youth worker I manage education projects for breaking convention and I run kind of like young artist development projects throughout the year um, and I've been doing that um, at, at literally the same time as I that I've been rapping I've been doing youth work and I actually love them both equally um, I would even say I like youth work a little bit more than being an artist, which is a bit crazy. But yeah, I just really like doing community work. So they are my four roles, basically. Nice. I love that we have got a multifaceted group of women here who don't just specialize in one thing. Because, you know, I guess in today's society, you kind of have to be able to be a, what well, they call it a slashy or whatever it, it, people call it. But um, you have to be able to do more than one thing. And I, I love that you ladies aren't afraid to dip and dab but also like you also enjoy what you do i will plug quickly plug myself since we're here hello <laughs> i'm anna marie i'm a presenter first so i'm mostly a presenter i do um well before covid i did lots of live events um red carpets that kind of stuff um i also have my own talk show called live with anna marie it's a music show set in my house not really my house and then um i recently in um, lockdown two, I launched my own skincare company uh, called House of Embrace. So we're all entrepreneurial women. I think, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. I was gonna say, your skin is mad glowy. So uh -huh. now that was a good plug. <laughs> like, Thank you. I do so <laughs> I'll give you guys a discount code. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go through the comments again. Emma V is in the building. Hello, Emma V. Um, TP says, Selling Sunset is a show. Selling Sunset was really good. I didn't like it. I loved it. You didn't like it. I watched like one episode and I was like, not feeling it. You've got to give it a chance. It took me three episodes to get in yeah. and I was hooked. Yeah, they are a little bit catty, but I love the drama. I live with the drama. <laughs> <laughs> Clara also agrees that Bling Empire is so good. Yes, yes, Chica agrees Bling Empire. Um, Janani, I hope I'm saying that right, Janani. Prayer hands. Hello, Evie loves R and Brit. 
Thank you, Evie. We are hoping to, we are in the works of bringing that show back. So um, we'll have some stuff for you very, very soon. Um, Demira says, yes, Shay. Tiny Man is in the building. Hello, Tiny Man. And yes, thank you all for your comments. Keep them coming. I'll make sure to read them out. And if you have any questions, do pop them in um, if they're directed to anyone and I'll be sure to ask them. We will also have time at the end, 15 minutes at the end for networking, Q&A. So if you want to stick around and share your work, your socials, and, um, you know, we'll all connect at the end. Okay, so let's get into today's webinar. So you've all spoken about the roles that you do and, um, and I guess like briefly your job titles, but let's go, let's get into specifics. How did you get into that role? And um, how are you managing in the current climate? I'll start with you, Jess. So I started 10 years ago, I was a singing teacher. So I went to music college, I went to music uni. And in the beginning, I was a vocal coach. And then I started being really specific with who I wanted to teach, I got to a level where I was able to choose. And I went with girl bands. And I was mm. coaching girl bands. And trying to figure out how can I get these girls in front of their, what I know now as a target audience, how can I take them to the correct venues? And I realized I did after like Googling, I was like, oh wow, like this is marketing. <laughs> so I always had this love for music, did really well with the girl band, got them signed, that was fantastic. Now they're off doing amazing stuff solo, which I'm really happy for them. I moved back to London, so I lived in Brighton, then I moved back to London, and I couldn't find, I didn't have any connects. Networking, like, eight years ago was not how it is today. Networking, there wasn't all this online community, there wasn't anything, so I just got, uh, I sent my CV in and got a job at a cinema chain called Pitch House Cinemas, and I started running all of their in-house and out-house events, did really well with them, moved on to another job in events, um, so I looked after something called the Reggae Brunch, where we when I started, there was like 100 to 200 people coming every Saturday. After two years, we had over 500 people coming across the UK. This, all this experience led me to where I am today. It's learning how to speak the language, walk the walk and talk the talk of your target audience and then find them online, start engaging with them and giving them all the value. So that I kind of learned through experience. I don't think anything I did was a waste of time ever every everything I learned to kind of got me to where I am today and now I'm at a point where I can do it freelance and I can choose who I want to work with again so I did that with my vocal coaching and I'm doing that with my social media marketing services I just work with creative people because I can speak their language even if they're a creative person so I've um I work with someone called Elise Kelman she is um really good in the industry she's a backing singer for loads of amazing artists but she's got a side job in lockdown of postal brownies and she didn't know how to start with marketing she could do the singing stuff no idea what to do with the postal brownie stuff and we've done really well together covid made me just double down on my own marketing i didn't i had a personal instagram i never used for business and i don't have a website so i got all the business i have now through using instagram and using like the amazing tools it has is just network yourself networking is key i think that's everything absolutely <laughs> absolutely i love that you started off as a vocal coach like yeah <laughs> crazy yeah. Like, to where you are today but i guess as you get older and you have more experience you kind of find your niche and like what's mm -hmm what truly is important to you. So we will touch on that a little bit later in the show. Um, Kirsten, so how did you get into your role and how are you managing in this COVID period? Yeah, um, I the way that I got in was just like, like not the, the normal route, but I feel like, I don't know what is the normal route to be honest in the music industry, but then I think that's like, that's a good um, sort of PSA to say like, you can get in in any sort of like creative 100%. way. Um, so originally I was a politics student, actually a graduate. So I was actually gonna go into politics. I didn't even really like have a concept of like what the music business was. I just really like music. <laughs> I just really, really am passionate about music and like have music friends. Um, and I basically had um, one of my best friends 
um, is a singer called Ayana. And um, she was just like starting out, like didn't have any music out. And I just, just felt like I could help her with like her social media and like presenting herself better. So like got in, did a meeting with her and her manager, who's her mom, where we, I was just going through like ideas that I had and they were like, you sound like you're like a publicist, like this, this, that's the role that you should do. And I was like, what the hell is a music publicist? <laughs> but ended up just like sort of making it work with her and then um, found R and Brit and just like really, really liked um, the platform and like what they do because I just really, really love UK R and B. So just asked whether I could, what I could do, what, what they needed like help with, which was their social media um, in the beginning. They didn't have a social media manager. So I started managing their Twitter and like part, partly their Instagram. Um, and then just from there, like was going to events for them um, like networking and then the co-founders asked me to do more like sort of artist relations and like business development and like high level things just because I just like talking to people <laughs> I just like to speak like the sun my voice no um and but um obviously you need to get paid like a lot of these roles were volunteer roles so I was just sort of like asking around I didn't even really know where to apply apply and one of my friends was like did you know that the major labels actually do like quite a lot of internships um and so just applied like just applied um to the commercial affairs department because i had background in like working at the in the government and like working in accounting and stuff so i didn't really feel like i could do like marketing or anything like that so when i looked at the job description it just seemed to match up with like the skills that i'd already done um and then yeah went through the interviewing process got it and then when I started working in the majors, that's when I really started to learn like the actual structure of the music industry. They really trained me very well. Um, and I started learning about streaming and things like that. And then just from there, like my career just like grew. And yeah, I just got, I got a really like good in-depth understanding of how the music industry worked and then just started to find like my niches and where it, it, it was like a bit more like my, my skill set. I was able to hone that in in each of my like jobs and then find where my interest in music lied and found that I really like gravitate towards like strategy and marketing and streaming and those sort of things combined so that's that's where I'm at today so my advice overall from like my experience is like grab go to where your like sort of passions lie even if you don't have that knowledge base yet or you don't know where like anything about the industry that you're entering in especially something like music which is like it's it's very hard to get your foot in the door just be proactive and just be innovative like you might find yourself doing like something small for someone and then it can it can take you somewhere else just because like you've networked and you've just done like all these things and you've been able to pick up skills in ways that you didn't even know so just like follow what you like and try and find something to do even if it's just like a side hobby to your main job in that and from there you, you don't know where things could take you so that's my advice yeah. of time you've been able to I guess navigate the industry and build a career um which would usually take someone multiple multiple years so um props to you and we'll come back to you and uh, we'll come back to you in a little bit um Shay D how did you get into you do many many things which are kind of related but like I guess separate parts of you so how did you get into that and how are you um managing in this time okay so um in terms of being an artist um I think I'm sure there's loads of like young artists that are watching as well um that just came about like everyone's story. Everyone has a story about how they became an artist. And um, for me, I kind I really liked poetry. My older cousins would listen to rap. Everyone in my school and college like days were like emceeing and stuff. And we would go to like youth clubs and like pirate radio stations. Everyone was rapping. And it's something I was really drawn to. And I really enjoyed like telling my story um over beats so for me like hip-hop was just always in my life and always around and then the grime scene kind of came about soon after so I kind of had my foot in grime and had my foot in like the rap world um and I just like carried on doing music when and when and how I could life stuff happens um and I always say to people that you know if you want a career like a pref professional career in music is very different um, than doing it just because you love it. 
like anyone can make music in the studio or at home and just play back and listen to it yourself. Um, and that's beautiful and it's fine to do it as a passion. But I think it's really important for you in yourself to decide whether you want to do this for fun and accept that if you make music and no one hears it, are you cool with that? And that's when you know it's just for you. If you want to do it as a professional career, you have to accept that the music industry now is a business and you have to navigate music as a business. Um, and I think it's important to clarify that. So initially for me, I didn't want to do music as a professional career. So I was just doing it for fun. And I went through a lot of life stuff. Like we had evictions. I'd lost fat, like I lost family. We had to move. I dropped out of uni. I was broke. I was working in Sainsbury's and like between jobs and music just wasn't important. Life was important and I had to do that. So I kind of put music on the back burner. Around that time is when I got into youth work and community work. There was a lot of like stabbings and stuff going on in my area. I just didn't want to see the area suffer. So I started volunteering and doing like free community work. And then slowly there was a bus that used to drive into the estate and at the back of the van would open and there was a studio built inside it. So all, all the youths and stuff, we'd all come out and we'd see like these decks on, on the van. Um, and I spoke to the person who was running it and they I, I was like, oh, I do like some mentoring and some youth work and stuff. And they put me in touch and I ended up running workshops and sessions and being employed by that company. And then I built my youth work stuff off that. I would say like, about six, seven years later, um, I decided that I wanted to do music again because one of my friends who I would do youth work with, MC Angel, she ran an event and she invited me to her open mic, her poetry event. And I went there to perform and I loved the event so much. I just naturally started plugging and promoting her event and getting people to come to the event every Tuesday. And she was like, Shay, you're just like so on it and you're you promote everything and you get people here and you're always here you might as well run it with me and then I ended up running that event with her and that's how I kind of fell into doing events and we moved that from like a little Tuesday night into a massive Saturday night 500 people every Saturday two floor event in Hackney um, and that did really well and during that time I went back into music because I was at a better place my love for it came back my confidence had come back doing stuff also with other people who are into the same thing really helped and that's how I kind of went back into doing music but with a new mindset that okay this is a music business is the music industry it's called the industry because it's a business and there's certain things you need to do to navigate that role and um, so um, while I was running that event and doing music one of the DJs at the event was like do you want to should we run a radio show and I was like yeah, that sounds really fun, let's do it. So we had a show on a really small local station, which I really recommend. Like I didn't try and go straight for one extra or, or you know, like a massive show. We were just doing a show on a local station every Sunday. We had sick guests. We would get so, like proper good people to come down, had loads of fun, did that for three years, every Sunday live. And then um, I then stopped doing radio for a bit, took a year break and then went on to represent. So everything kind of tied into each other. And I just think it's really important to have your own expectations of what you want from what you're doing, whether it is a radio presenter, if it's an event organizer, if it's a rapper, like just know, why am I doing this? What do I want to get out of it? Is it for fun or is it for my career? And then you can kind of write your goals and how you're going to get to that goal with little steps and then take it from there basically that was an amazing story thank you so much for sharing that and I, I think it's quite inspiring just to hear how your life has gone up and down and you're here now you're you're killing it right now so uh, and that's all that's matter. so thank you very much mm -hmm. for that i want to go through a couple of the comments i'm going to answer your questions at the end so in the last 10 15 minutes i will be sure to answer your questions um but i can see that t has answered uh, your question clara but we will post it we'll throw it over to the girls um damira also says she's doing a politics and international relations degree just starting out with spoken word i actually did a politics and international relations yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I dropped out. I didn't <laughs> it. <laughs> but you know, we will make it in life. Um, there are some young artists watching. Hello, Chica. Nice to hear that you are a young artist and received receiving um helpful advice. Emma V says, shout out MC Angel. <laughs> she got me into music too. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> uh, Ramel, quick plug from Ramel. Let's network. I'm a music producer, songwriter, musician. We we will say that for the end as well, but nice for throwing that in there. If anyone is um interested in connecting with Ramel, please do. Um, uh, Ivy says, so inspiring, Shay. And Patrick, I'll answer your question at the end. Um, so you all had some interesting topics that I wanted to, to get into, but I, I think something that stood out for me is the most is finding your target audience. Well, also finding your niche, but then finding your um, target audience. And that's something that's very important in the digital era because you kind of, as much as, as you're a creative and you want to do multiple things, it's something that I've struggled with, but finding the, the little things that make you you or like the thing that you're passionate about and then being, being able to capitalize off that. How would, you, um, how would you say you go about finding your niche and then going off to find your target um, audience? I'll start with you, Jessica. Sure. So... When we say niche, I do this quite, I do free talks for young people all the time. And one of the big topics we talk about is niches. So what is a niche in the beginning for people who don't know? It's a specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or service. For example, they believe they've found a niche in the market. With that saying, the word niche is your people and the people that care about what you're doing and you also care about them. If you choose not to use niching, you choose not to have a target audience with your marketing, I recommend you like sell stuff on eBay, do drop shipping, have an Amazon storefront. You can make money online without having to show your face or be heart centered business. But if you're promoting yourself as a musician and your face is there, you got to have a niche. So let's niche down in four questions. I hope you've got a pen and paper or you can save this for a later date. A good way to niche is identify the talent and skills that you're good at it could be anything from i'm wicked at eating ice cream to i'm a really good rapper out of the above talents and skills what is it that you enjoy doing the most i want you to write down as many as you can and then eliminate what that you physically enjoy what you love about it out of those skills and talents that you enjoy what do people need from you what can they learn from you what can you give them as value and then finally, from the above needs, what are people going to pay you money for or pay you money in streams or pay you money by getting a ticket to your show? Whilst you're doing this, it's really important to think, especially in the beginning, be a big fish in a small pond. I have no doubt that millions of people around the world are going to appreciate your musicianship, but everyone's got to start somewhere. You can thrive locally and then you can thrive globally. Starting small as that go-to musician for that genre or that type of people in a micro niche demographic gives you a massive advantage going forwards. Hope that Absolutely. helps. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a great answer. Thank you, thank you. And I'm sure that there are a few artists in there, creatives in general, who can take that and apply it it to their stuff. I've written it down. I hope you've written oh, it down. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kazan, I'll move on to you. So um, I guess you found your niche as you went through um, the pipeline and and you, you had more experience. But um, working with brands such as, as Universal, well, companies such as Universal or brands such as r and Brit, how do you then like identify their target audience how and how do you create content based off that that's a really good question um i'll start off with r and brit because obviously it's the it's niche central is <laughs> um r and brit it's all about uk r and b which is our niche um to begin with so um i think like you have to I, I think finding your niche in general you have to try your hand at everything i think you should you shouldn't be doing things that you don't 
feel motivated to do or you don't feel positive to do and I think as a team like if we try if we try something and it's like it's laborious or something like that we scrap it like we don't even think twice we're very like let's do something that is motivating all of us and that we all like to do um I think from that like being able to then find your target audience like if whenever we put our all behind a project or something we can always weigh up like how much are people responding to it? How much are people like responding to our content? And then from there, you can take that content and grow it further. Um, it's obviously like interesting because most of our um, content is on social media. So there's like great insights through like Instagram, TikTok, and we're looking at that all the time and analyzing that. And there's like a lot of data analysis that you just pick up. You don't necessarily have to be a data analysis, analysis expert, but you can pick it up and understand um, on those sorts of things and then from there, you can just like build an actual strategy around like what you're actually looking at. Um, in Universal, it's a bit different because I'm working on like artists that have like a really global reach. Um, but even in that, there's certain artists that might have that have actually taken us by surprise because they've actually had a niche audience and maybe we're used to working on um, artists that like have a more mainstream um, approach. And then from there, we've had to like adapt. Um, and again, like it's all about really like monitoring your audience and monitoring like what they're actually interested in and what they respond to. There's no point just because you're used to doing something, following the same formula for every single project uh, that that your um, undertaking. So um, I just think like being adaptive, I, it's not as like <laughs> glamorous as Jess, but it just has like a really, really good method, which I'm learning a lot from as well. But I just feel like being adaptive and being responsive and reactive, those things are like, really, really important in every role, whether you're a musician, whether you're an industry expert, whether you're managing a social media or brand or something like that, whether you're working in a major, like you have to be reactive, especially like right now as things are like changing constantly. So that's my answer. Yeah. That's great. I, I wrote down adaptive, responsive, mm -hmm. and reactive. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Shady, how about you? So how did you, I guess as a music, we can do it from like a music point of view, but also as a presenter point of view, how did you find um, your niche and then your target audience? Um, I think as an, as, I think as a musician, you kind of uh, fall into a niche organically, uh, firstly from the genre of music that you make. So for me, um, it was rap. Um, so already that's a, that's a target audience because uh, of course, like someone who listens to, um, you know, pop or like rock or whatever, or, you know, a different type of genre, they also might listen to rap. Like we're all eclectic and we like different types of music, but naturally the genre of music you make is gonna be your target audience firstly. Um, and then I think probably around like the topics that I naturally would rap about. So a lot of my music was focused around women, uh, women empowerment, um, holding a space um also a social commentary so a lot of my rap would be about life like things going on in the area and and stuff like that so that kind of like minimized it down again so I had there was a lot of like girls there was a lot of women coming to our shows and coming to our events um when I was making merch um a lot of girls were buying the stuff because my lyrics would be on the t-shirt and it's relevant to a girl um over a guy so like it kind of was organic in the type of music I was making. Uh, but I think like what Jessica said, like was really like useful as well, because I think if you make sure you know what you love doing, you're going to be really good at doing that. And that is going to reflect in all your work and that's going to attract the right people to you. Um, and also paying attention to um, on a technical, like a digital level, um, paying attention to your insights um, on your social media, is I found really helpful. And I only did that a bit later, like I didn't do that earlier in my career. So if you have an Instagram page, um, if you turn your Instagram page in your settings, if you turn your Instagram page into a business page, that then allows you to go into the back end of your social media page and you can see how many people looked at your page, how many people you reached, 
uh, the percentage of men to women. You can also see the age that they are and you can see the location they're in. For example, if um, your audience says that there is 90% um, women and they're all in Spain and they are between the ages of say 20 to 30, then you know that it would be really cool if you're writing a female empowerment track and you stick a Spanish line in your song that that audience is going to be gassed because they're going to recognize it. So the insights kind of help want to maximize on that niche, that target audience, because otherwise you can look at that and go, no, I don't care. I still want to make what I want to make and I want to do what I want to do because this is what I like. And whoever comes and sees my stuff comes and sees my stuff. But if you're someone who really wants to maximize on your audience and focus on it on a business level, then that is a really good way of doing it. And I think you can also do it uh, like on Facebook, you have insights, Twitter has insights. Um, and if you're if you're an artist that has your music distributed, you can kind of literally do the same thing with your Apple Music and your Spotify. You just need to get something called Spotify for Artists and Apple Music for Artists. And it's exactly the same format. You can go into the back end of it and see where people are, how old they are, where they're located, et cetera. Some great tips there. Thank you, Shady. Thank you to all of you. Um, let me just scroll through the comments. Great advice. That was dope. That was gold. Um, Patrick's got it in his notepad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm seeing your, your questions. So I will answer those at the end. So I just want to move on to the, the future of the music and the creative industry. Um, we are in unprecedented times currently, you know, we don't know um, what's gonna happen next. Things are changing before our, before our very eyes. So what do you think the future, um, I guess, of like the digital world looks like and what kind of skills um, should young people or creators, music artists, what skills should be, we be looking um, to implement and learning. Again, Jessica, I'll start with you. Technically, the video is king. So with the whole TikTok phenomenon and Reels now coming out, everyone thought that was gonna flop, but it's doing really great. Even YouTube is coming out with something called Shorts, which is this short portrait video. That content is going to be king and I would say you need to double down on that style just because it's what people are liking and they're probably going to like it at least for the year ahead. But video content is king, so invest in a ring light. You can get small ones from Amazon. Lighting really helps with your video content. Practice on your Instagram stories, showing up and actually chatting to camera, but not chatting for yourself and doing pretty boomerangs where there is time and space for that but finding out what your audience actually wants from you and how you can service them with valuable content. So would a day in the life work really well in your story, et cetera, et cetera. The future of the digital age is and has been going towards video for a really long time. So upskill your camera, maybe go and get some acting lessons or so you can feel that camera confidence. When I was in music school, they were like, you're just not made for camera because your voice is really squeaky. And my voice was really squeaky. And I, have, I have got quite a high voice now, but I have been learning how to like lower it and speak slower. I did a video on a, a channel where I was helping with the community and I went for it and I thought I did really good. And then afterwards I got a comment saying, that was really great, but your hands were flying everywhere. Like I was so distracting. I'm half Italian and I speak with my hands all the time. So now like if I'm doing something important, I sit on my hands and I just talk and I've got script. A lot of the stuff that I've said in this video has been from slides that I pre-made, kind of preempting what we were gonna chat about. So yeah, technically work on your video content and just get that tone of voice down who are you speaking to and why are you speaking to them? Because video is the best way to create that instant re relatability. So I'd recommend. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I didn't think reels were going to pop off the way that they did. But nah. reels get crazy, yeah. crazy views. Especially if it's yeah. a trending topic, goes off. So yes, 
reels, jump on that. Um, Kirsten, as someone who works in the industry, working with artists, working um, in a big label, what, what does the future look like in the digital space for, for you? Um, so I, I have to agree with Jess that videos are like monopolizing, whether they're short form reels, but even it like music videos, just the the small clips that go viral on social media like those are the sorts of things that get attention more than like anything else um so it would be it's good i think to like try and figure out ways to like um yeah brush up on your like video skills whether that's like learning how to video edit like some basics basics like not anything so um in depth if you can't afford it um, but I think just in general within in um, within the music space, um, as like we're moving in a digital world and like we've moved away from physical, like digital marketing has become like such like a massive part of like whether you're running anything, a brand, whether you're an artist, um, and being able to do that in-house as opposed to like paying someone to distribute for you is like massive um, and can like fill the gaps for, for like PR and things like that. So like just... Um, learning what digital marketing is, and it doesn't have to be like being able to be, as I said, like some highly skilled person. Obviously, like being able to research and upskill as much as you can on your own is really good. But like it's things that we've mentioned up until this point, like data analysis and like be just even like social list, something as simple as social listening, which is just like being up to date on like trends and what's going on and being able to like exploit those things is digital marketing. So that like as you, if you can do that in house and you're not paying people to do it, especially as an up and coming artist and starting off, um, and just sort of like being super like tapped in and engaged with the like the digital space that you can push that, um, then that I feel like is um, other those are the sorts of skills that like are really important right now. Um, but yeah, we're increasingly becoming more digital and especially like in this pandemic and in this lockdown, like e absolutely everything is online. So um, yeah, just making sure that even the video content that you're putting out as just said is really, really like um, as, as high quality as it can be on a budget. So like simple things like, as she said, a ring light, a good camera, which is, these are still things that are like quite costly, but just like, even if it's not you owning a good camera, trying to find friends that have a good camera and can, and can film you and like, as I said, building everything as much as you can in-house and being resourceful. So, yeah, I hope that didn't digress too much, but yeah. No, that was perfect, thank you. <laughs> uh, and Shady, how about you? What's the future looking like and what skills do we need? Okay, so I'm gonna be really hopeful here and say that I am hoping that things are gonna go back into events and live and real life and stuff as well at some point. So we will come away from screens at one point I hope it's <laughs> but um yeah I think at for like the short term like kind of current future as in like this year or whatever um I do um I think um as the girls have said already um that's that's what I think as well like really um kind of engaging content um and of course like high quality stuff I totally agree with that um also um, for, from personal experience um, and, and depending the type of person you're like and also what you're into because everyone's different but I just think um, just being just being yourself like just really being your authentic your your true spirit like what you are like that's going to be your most truthful way of knowing if you have an audience that like you um because you know we it is important for us to analyze these stats and it is important for us to um have a tone when we're speaking to a certain audience or a brand and stuff of course and it's very good to practice that especially if you get you know, a, later on in your career, a brand might approach you and say, we, we're going to pay you this much and we want you to do this. And of course, you have to be able to adapt that tone for your job that you've been commissioned to do. But everything that I feel like has helped me get like a strong, loyal fan base has been, has been because I've always just been my true self and spoken my mind about what I'm into, what I care about. So you know, if you're someone who really cares about the refugee crisis and 
you want to talk about that in what you're doing I think you know you should talk about it if you want to stand up for something talk about it if you're someone who's super funny in real life and you're really clumsy and you're always breaking things or falling over and stuff you know let your audience see that maybe you can make some content or TikTok stuff around that or maybe come on your IG live and just be like okay I'm super clumsy da, da, da. has anyone got funny stories and stuff and your thing might be comedy and it might be around that so if you're someone who's really funny and stuff you know it it, it feels off key to like do all these like moody high fashion screw face dark kind of videos that's not really your personality if you're watching someone thinking oh they get they get so many likes or they got so many followers or they are they got that um but they're so different to me maybe I need to be more like that no like they're probably just like that they that's them and just being yourself will attract the right audience for you. And you know your audience is going to be there, kind of like life. You're yourself, and that's why you have your friends. You might not get on with other people, but if you imagine your friends as your audience, like, they're, they're friends with you, they like you because they like you. And that's exactly the same with your audience. And then you love your audience because they are passionate about the same things you're passionate about. So if you're not being your authentic self and you have this whole audience that you wouldn't even be friends with them in real life, then I don't know, like it's, it's very different as a musician to if you are, like Jessica said earlier, like if you're an Amazon seller selling shampoos, you don't, it, that's not important. <laughs> you can just be whatever, but as a musician or, or as like the you, you being the service, you being the product or the brand, I think be your true self and whether it's five people that always engage with you or if it's 200 people that engage with you, you know they're there because they like you and you get to be yourself. And what's better than being yourself? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, love, I love that. Okay, there's a slight echo. I'm not sure where that's coming from. But um, I'm just conscious of the time. So um, I'm going to start answering your questions. So if you do have a question at the top of your head, then do fling it in the comments. Uh, make sure that you're engaging with us on Twitter, Insta, at Wired for Music LDN. Um, but I'm going to start with the first question that we had, which was from Clara. And she said, networking is key, but how do you network better during the pandemic lockdown uh, when all our normal, to normal tools are out of the window? Any of you can pick up on that one. I've got quite a good example. So prior to March 2020, when I went freelance, I had never done any networking or I just avoided it like the plague because I didn't like being in crowded spaces. I don't want to physically talk to anyone in real life. Like my boss would put me forward to these networking events and I would say, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to do my work. But in around the summertime, I was asking my friends like do you know anyone who works like who are women in business or women in social media like how are they navigating this space and one of they sent me so many cool online networking groups one of them was called found and flourish and they are a women's networking group it's uh you can find them on instagram i messaged the owner the founder separately she had her own account and i wanted to interview her for my own page a month later she was like jess can you do social media for me and then I got loads of other clients because it was a networking group. It's, you just have to Google who your people are and find out where they are hanging out online and position yourself in the front of that line. And that's the, that's the secret. Um, Facebook groups are really good for that. So you can go on Facebook and search like UK musicians and you'll find so many groups where UK musicians are chatting to each other and networking. Um, yeah, just search your keywords as well. It doesn't always have to be about the music. It can be about stuff you love too, because that completes your musicianship. Thank you for that answer. I hope that answers your question, Clara. Um, next, we've got a question from Chica. She says, if you're an artist trying to grow your audience and you've got the quality music, but you're also a student, poor, <laughs> and can't just afford to hire a publicist, what would you recommend? Um, I feel like, Kirsten, you can pick up on that one? Um, yeah, that's a good question because like, the, in this UK, it's so hard. Like, it's so, so hard. Like, money is not just readily available for everyone. 
Um, and so not everyone can just afford like really expensive PR. Um, I think we've covered it quite a bit. Like just trying to organically grow your audience online is quite literally the best that you can do. And that's like, as we've said, like tracking your insights, that sort of thing. And like doing doing things like that, that consistent content upload is like always a good way to like get as much engagement as you can. So whether it's like your music or like behind the scenes, just coming up with things that like you genuinely like doing, as we've said so many times throughout this thing that you can just put up online. Um, but there's also like funds that you can apply for and like different like music funds, like PRS do things, like there's so many um, arts council, like there's so many different um, pots of money that like are there that you can tap into. And I'm not saying that like you're guaranteed to get them, but there is, there are people that do fund us, especially right now during this time that you can then like tap into and then maybe pay for like PR or pay for something. But if, you, if, you, if you're starting off from scratch and you don't have money, trying to organically grow your audience is like the best thing that you can do and really all you can do at this point. And the people will be there. We've seen people like start off from nothing like Manelia who went viral this time last year. And that was just like her and her friends and her team like who pulled a video together and then everyone just loved it. And it just so happened to go viral. So, I mean, Shay's said it so many times throughout this um, this thing, doing something that's authentic, people will gravitate towards that if it's if they can see that it's you. And that it's and it's going to be quality because it's you. So yeah, that's my advice. Great. Um, I'm not sure how to say that. Twan Ken <laughs> or T W One Ken. I'm not sure. Asked, do I have to have a distributor to put music on Spotify? Clara answered that question and said, yes. CD Baby, Ditto, TuneCore, those kind of companies. You're all nodding your head. So I guess. Um, that is correct <laughs> in terms of uh, music distribution. Um, Isabella asks, I recently graduated with a degree in law, but have made the decision to venture into the music industry. Do you have any tips for starting to get into the industry and seeking unpaid work experience? Whoever wants to pick up on that. I think um, Jessica um, said something earlier um, about kind of, doing uh, i mean even my youth work i started off doing voluntary stuff jessica i, I actually all of us i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just you just do you just do you know like you just do it but um i also uh, i appreciate that you might not be able to just walk, walk into somewhere or your friend needs something etc um i'm sure everyone else ha has has an answer but a, a really quick one is to um and I, and I always say this, like, sometimes you don't have to go for the big boss, like the big dogs, like straight away. Sometimes finding a more local version of what you want to do and just finding out uh, who, who you need to email. You can call and ask reception or you can do some Google searches. You can try LinkedIn. Most people have their emails in their bio. So if you find out who the CEO or a management position in that place is, um, sometimes even someone who works there, it could be a, a producer or it could be a project manager uh, that works somewhere that you want. If you just email them and say, hi, really polite, always be super polite throughout your whole career. People remember who you are, people talk. So always be respectful and polite. If you just say, I'd really like to do some uh, voluntary work or I'd really like some work experience. I'm really good at this, this and this. I'm really flexible. Who would be the best person for me to email? And that's a kind of initial way of of kind of getting through to them, um, I would say in that sense. I've done that quite a few times. Okay, nice one. Um, last question from Patrick who says, what little steps can music artists take to start making your career more into a business? like Shay you might have um I mean like we can talk about this particular thing for ages <laughs> um but I think um I think like listing what you want to get out of music um what are your goals um and what is measurable and in that sense I mean is it that um, you want to have a certain amount of streams? Is it that you want to have a certain amount of followers, aka your audience? Is it that when we, we're allowed to do live shows again, you want to be able to sell out a venue with 100 people in it? 
um, if you're an emerging artist, maybe you just want 50 people to come to like a listening party for like something you have. I think it's important to list down what you want to gain and how you can measure that so that every six months you can actually analyze where you are and be like, okay, this is how much I've invested and spent into my career. This is what I've got out of it weigh it up is it worth it do you need to change anything and then you can adjust your goal and maybe that's gonna be I don't care about my followers now I care about hitting you know 50k streams on Spotify for example I think it's important to write down your personal goal and assess that every three to six months and be careful that you're not spending a lot of your extra money that you have that you've saved and you're working you're grinding and you're getting your wages or whatever and then you're spending it into your music and not seeing an outcome um I think that's um, really important a good way to do that is with smart goals it sounds like something you'll do in primary school or secondary but they are so good and useful to like put those metrics and those numbers down so just google smart goals because they really help Thank you, yes. Okay, last question that I'll squeeze in um, <clears throat> from Demira. She says, how do you guys deal with setbacks and self-doubt? I think that's a very good question. Ooh. Mm. I could jump in on that one, actually. <laughs> um, because I think self-doubt is something that you have to learn. You have to learn how to quiet that voice like for me like my therapist says to me like because I have many voices in my head so I have to <laughs> identify which voice is me and which voice is you know the self-doubt mm -hmm. and sometimes personifying it and then just like I I create mine like there's a little mouse so so whenever I feel like oh maybe you shouldn't do that oh no that's not going to be good enough like I put the little mouse in a jar <laughs> and I put it over there. But that's something that you, you um, learn to build um, up over time. But setbacks are completely normal. And sometimes you realize, as you go on in your career, you realize that maybe that opportunity wasn't for me, or maybe I wasn't actually ready for that right there. And then you looked, you, you're able to appreciate it, but um, it comes with the territory it comes with the game like you you're not gonna get everything that you apply for or everything that you want you just gotta keep focusing on what you do want and the opportunities that you can get and the people that are around you that support you and you know ultimately will lift you up that's mm -hmm. my opinion. if you guys want to go, on, go ahead <laughs> yeah no i think i think that's great advice i mean i've uh i've had numerous breakdowns uh, during my career and I mean like getting six back-to-back -back rejection emails for something I've won and I'm talking about ugly crying in the middle of the living room on the floor with my boyfriend like looking at me like I don't even know what to do right now me going I think I'm so tired I've been working so hard like <laughs> And I know people, um, a lot of my friends are really successful in what they do. And like, they've got loads of followers. They have really good gigs, da, 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 da. And that's what you would think would make someone happy. But everyone has personal goals. And it's very natural and normal to feel rubbish about what you're doing or feel let down or feel sad. But there's always a balance. And that is generally the yin and yang of life. There is always something that will counter that. You might have a really bad phase and then two, two, suddenly you've got a grant come through. You've got a really good gig or something. Someone messages you something like you've changed my life. Da, da, da. That will, you, we have to have those self-doubt moments to then big ourselves up when we are doing something good. So I think it's just natural when those setbacks and self-doubt come, feel it. Like mm. feel that pain, feel, feel, have a really good cry, like punch your pillow, go for a walk, like whatever you need to do, feel it because it's natural, we're human. And then be like, all right, boom, like I've had my sadness, I've cried my eyes out, what am I going to do about it now? I've been rejected for this, what am I going to apply for now? You know, like, and, and communicate that, communicate that with your people around you, you don't need to hold it inside, no, no one's expecting you to always be strong and no one's like that it's just no one anyone you think is like that they're not like that or they're not showing you that they're like that but it's mm. it's just normal like it's, it's okay yeah absolutely you must always be able to bounce back from any opportunity you can't sit there and, and wallow 
in your misery. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. <laughs> we don't have time. We're in a pandemic. We've got to... <laughs> Okay, um, so we have come, unfortunately, to the end of this webinar. This has been such an amazing and insightful conversation, and I'm so grateful to be here with you, ladies. So thank you for your time. Um, if your question wasn't answered, you can always tweet at Wired for Music LDN. You can see the, the person who is, I think it's Jasmine, <laughs> running the account in the comments. So go and chat to her. We will also um, have a deep dive session next week. So if you signed up to this, you will get um, a newsletter in your email speaking all about that. You can find out a little bit more information and we'll have smaller um, workshop groups discussing digital marketing and you know that kind of stuff. We're also gonna have, these webinars are monthly, um, well, in the work monthly. Um, so we will have another topic and some more guests next month. So make sure that you're following us on socials and just stay tuned for a lot more. I'd like to thank our guests, Jessica, Shady, Kirsten, Wild for Music, TP is in the back making things happen. And every single one of you um, for tuning in. This has been such an eventful uh, event. Um, so yeah, keep it posted, stay safe, stay inside. And we'll see you guys another time. Thank you as well for being Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.